I noticed that there aren't many guides about K50 on YouTube these days, and those that do exist are some 3 to 5 years old. I decided to make a guide series for this bird to show what it can really do, because it's capable of doing so many things, be it navigating the thing practically without touching the stick by using autopilot and flight plan, or using data link to store reference points, targets, coordinates, and storing that information into your onboard system, which can be used to send the required data to your buddies who you're playing with. It can be AI, it can be other players, whatever. And then use that information to execute strategic attacks. But, of course, it goes without saying, it takes time to go through everything and to learn it all, but if you ask me, it's totally worth it. I'll start off with the basics and move on to a more complex stuff as we go on. In the first video of this series, I'm going to start off with the basic how-to startup procedure and maybe show you a few tips and tricks that you probably missed or didn't know before. Now that the introductions are out of the way, let's move into the game. As you can see, it's pretty dark in the cockpit. We can't see our switch as well. And what do you do in this situation? This is one of the reasons that I started up in a night mission, because nobody really shows you how to start up K50 in night conditions. What, you're going to just randomly press buttons and hope you hit the right one? There are ways of how to easily start up the K15 in night missions. There are two ways to do this. We can, uh, we need, first we need electrical power. And we need electrical power to use this cockpit light on the left uh, rear panel to our pilot seat. It's called Lightning Cockpit Interior Lamp Switch. And we need power for that. We can supply the power in two ways. We can use our batteries or we can use the external power uh, that ground crew can provide us. I'm going to use this one in, that in this tutorial just to demonstrate. So if we contact our ground crew and press F8 and then ground crew electric power on. They will now enable the ground ground power, so head on with the, So head on with the DC ground power switch and flip it up. Now we are being supplied with electrical power and we can use this lamp right here to lighten up our cockpit. And now we can see everything. Note that uh, if you want to contact the ground crew in the K50 during startup, you have to have the door open. If the door is closed like this and you're trying to con contact them, you can't really, uh, they won't reply to you because they can't hear you. Radio is not on and you have to set it if you want to. So if you want to talk with the ground crew, you need to enable this switch right here. It's called SPU-9 Radio Communication Selector. You have to have it in this mode right here called ground crew. Uh, this is a cockpit mode, so I'm not sure what it's called in the uh, original uh, cockpit. And you have to have uh, this switch intercom enabled. So now if I close my doors and I say, I don't know, I want to change something and I want to put on our Vickers on my loadout, they will reply to me. And this way you can talk to ground crew uh, with the door closed. So now that that's done, let's start with startup. To start up this aircraft, we need to first supply with AC power, so left and right generators, forward and aft fuel tanks, fuel quantity, fuel shutoff valve for left and right engine, and fuel shutoff valve for APU. Once the fuel shutoff for APU is ticked on, we can press the startup while the APU is selected. While the APU is selected on the engine selector. We can see the APU is starting here and it will stabilize around 600 degrees Celsius. And now that that's done, we can put down our rotor brake, select our left engine and press start. Here we see the RPM of the engine. Once it reaches around 20%, you can flip the fuel shutoff valve and it will continue going up. So while that's uh, being, uh, while that's ramping up, let's look at our right uh, back plate or back panel. Here we see the lighting for the back panel, and this is the ecran systems, 
uh, here we see the laser warning system receiver or wa uh, laser warning receiver to warn us about if someone is uh, lasing us like tanks uh, here we see the countermeasures panel and internal navigation unit which will spin out the gyros to align the systems and everything uh, let's boot up the Abris as well while we add it and now that our first engine has started up let's change the engine selector here and press start again okay the second engine has started we can bring out the fuel shutoff valve now that if by any means your engine do doesn't start like or your APU or an engine does, doesn't start, you've done something wrong you can use this uh, false start to crank the engines to purge the old fuel that's in the engine at the moment so you can start it normally again so you don't have to re respawn but uh, that procedure is in the manual, it's really easy to check it out if you want uh, okay so that's done our engine number two is pulling up Okay, so laser standby and the targeting system for the for this is getting turned on. Now that we've done that, let's flip all the rest of the switches. Let's flip the ejection seat, weapon systems, standby, navigation, uh, ele electronic uh, engine governors. Uh, bank hold, pitch hold, and heading hold autopilot. Uh, here we see the uh, PPI, I think it's called, I'm not sure. Uh, you can change the nav mode here. Uh, if the nav mode is in operate, that means it will function and do everything. You can switch waypoints, you can go to waypoints and do all, the, all that good stuff. If you want to create new waypoints or edit the existing waypoints, you uh, bring it down to here to edit and you can create new waypoints, create new targets um, and stuff like that that's really cool so now uh, this switch right here is used to uh, when your uh, nav system degrades over time you need to update it and there are two ways to update it it's in the manual I uh, suggest you read it when you have to because it's getting too long to, to explain it in this video uh, you can choose to either use the Schwal sensor or some random location that you set up on the on the map uh, here is our data link power and flip the switch to wingman and this means that you can receive and send data to the wingman uh, let's turn the rest of the, our radios on and now that our engine has started up we can tell the ground crew to turn off the ground power and we will turn on our batteries turn off the ground power there we go we can turn off our light and engage these lights we can also turn the anti-collision lights and the rotor blade tip lights as you can see here we can also use uh, formation lights are here and navigation lights are here these lights can be used as a Morse code. If you right-click it, you can you can do Morse code signals. For example, that's pretty cool. You can useful stuff. Okay, now that's done. Uh, double checking and triple checking everything. Okay, 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 okay. Now we need to bring our throttle up because now it's an uh, it's on idle. So if you turn turn it up, this is on idle. And if you turn it one more, it's going to be on auto. This is the this is the setting you generally want to use. It automatically controls because the electronic engine governors. Okay. Now that that's covered, uh, there's one more thing I want to say. So let let me turn these switches off and reduce the brightness of this. 
we know we all know that you have um, head mounted display to use so you can slow the shroud uh, sensor to your to whatever location you want to use and here you can increase or decrease the brightness of that side but what you what you may not know is that you can uh, tell the ground crew to switch to your night vision to replace this site with the night vision site if you go to your connection tab and press F8 and change head mounted device into night vision so our night night vision is now installed and if we hit the same key that we used to display the helm of the display we will have night vision now let me turn off this anti-collision light because it's distracting. So now we have our night vision instead of uh, held mounted display and it's pretty useful for night missions. And if you want to increase or decrease the brightness you can use this key right here. There you go. Okay. Now that that's done let's And to take off in this thing, uh, if you look at the lower left corner, you can see me moving the joystick. The best way to, to trim the aircraft for taking off is right about here. You press the trim key and you release it and center back the stick. And now when you take off, uh, it should be generally, relatively easily to take off.